Hello everyone. The Long-Term Care Units and the Department of Geriatrics of King Edward VII Memorial Hospital in Bermuda are delighted to participate in this year's British Geriatric Society Autumn Meeting. My name is Jerry De La Cruz, a long-term care nurse and a co-author of the study, A Novel Pressure Injury Care Bundle for Dependent Patients with Pressure Injuries in Bermuda. We collected data from 30 consecutive patients with pressure injuries who were initially admitted in the acute care wards. These 30 patients were followed for an average of 116 days plus minus 275 days after being transferred to long-term care units. 60% of the patients were female the average age was 80 years old. 83% have stage 2 to 4 pressure injuries on admission to acute care wards. These 30 patients had an average score of 7 in Charlson Comorbidity Index, and 90% of them were on palliative care. In terms of mobility and cognition, 80% were bedfast and 73% had cognitive impairment in which 55% had an advanced dementia. While in the acute care wards, these 30 patients received pressure injury care such as repositioning, appropriate nutrition and hydration, and wound care. When these patients were transferred to long-term care units, the Department of Geriatrics introduced the Pressure Injury Care Bundle that could enhance the standard of pressure injury care. It was implemented by multiple pressure injury nurse champions and an interdisciplinary team were involved in the management. A Pressure Injury Care Bundle is a composite tool of all facets of pressure injury care. It includes positioning, incontinence care, and application of barrier cream, and the use of pressure relieving devices such as wedges, offloading boots, and turn select mattress. In this bundle chart, it also monitors the skin condition such as development of new pressure injury, skin tears, skin excoriation, and soiled wound dressing. The safety check is conducted to make sure that the pressure relieving devices and wound dressing is appropriate. If not, the pressure injury team reviews the pressure care management in place and modify the care to correct. The importance of hydration and nutrition is included in this chart. It will also be noted if the patient has below fluid intake requirement and the presence of poor appetite. We collaborated with a dietitian to address a patient's diet that promotes wound healing. The bundle chart is checked every two hours and must be review completion every four hours. The pressure injury care bundle was incorporated in our existing pressure injury care management program to enhance the standard of care. In this cycle diagram, the pressure injury care bundle is under the management section, a tool to monitor compliance of pressure injury care. The standard of care was implemented on the day of admission to long-term care units and a thorough head-to-toe skin assessment was conducted. We used Braden scale to predict pressure sore development, and we adapted the pressure ulcer scale for healing or push tool from the National Pressure Ulcer Advisory Panel to monitor the pressure ulcers. The Braden scale and push tool were updated every week with wound photography and measurements. I am now going to demonstrate a short episode of wound measurement on a specific patient who is of power of attorney and given specific consent. 
First, the picture on the left side is a pressure injury as it appeared on the day of admission to long-term care unit. It is apparent that the wound size has not diminished remarkably. On this video, the nurse is measuring dimensions and depth of the wound. A photograph is always taken on a weekly basis, which allows objective evaluation of potential improvement or deterioration during MDT discussions. The interdisciplinary team involvement, such as the dietitian, nursing staff, medical team, and wound care specialist, resulted in significant improvement and healing of pressure injuries. In this study, there was a significant improvement of pressure injuries in 36% of patients in an average of 103 days. In further 50% of patients, wounds closed completely after an average of 154 days. And in 17% of these patients, some had initially improved their pressure ulcers and yet developed new pressure injuries. These new pressure injuries occurred within 21 days prior to death in cohort with sarcopenia, a severe muscle wasting, and those with multiple comorbidities. Here is an example of a wound that was improved and healed. In group A pictures is a stage 3 pressure ulcer to left hip that was healed in 200 days. On the other hand, group B pictures is a stage 4 pressure ulcer to right hip that was improved within 263 days. Thus, the multimodal intervention incorporated in the pressure injury care bundle can result in significant improvement and or wound closure in dependent older patients with pressure injuries.